Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plants. It's me again, Mark. Today we're back at the greenhouse with another video. And for this one, I was thinking that I will be taking you to my daily routine, to how I work around in my greenhouse, in my garden, in, with our succulents. So I'll be sharing with you some of the things that I do and especially the ones that I would consider as hacks when it comes to keeping your succulents alive, keeping your garden, keeping your greenhouse healthy and pretty and right now it's actually getting very windy. So I made a list of five different hacks that I do around here in my greenhouse. So I will be sharing them with you one by one. Maybe these uh, tips will give you some idea on how to keep your succulents alive as well. So let's go on to our first one. The first tip that I would like to share with you guys is to delay watering. Now I know a lot of you, uh, especially beginners, will have a lot of experience killing succulents by overwatering, by rot, by fungus. So a lot of actually a lot of beginners are asking about me what I do to deal with fungus. And what I would say to recommend about that is to avoid getting fungus in the first place. Avoid getting your succulents overwatered so that they won't get mushy. And one tip that I will share about that is to delay watering. If your succulent is dry already, you check already their pot if they are dry. And you check their leaves if they are already kind of wilty, kind of thirsty. But you're still not sure if you have to water them, then delay watering them. Personally, managing a large greenhouse, I do sometimes uh, make it so that in one month, I will spend one week that I will not be watering my succulents probably. So that all of my succulents will have a chance to dry out really and I will be sure that none of my succulents will be dying by overwatering. And I think this is also true when it comes to those who farm succulents over in the highlands. They have greenhouses which are far away from their home and they will sometimes just travel just to water their succulents and then they will leave their succulents again for a few days letting the succulents dry out. So succulents don't need a lot of attention really. You can leave them be for about a week. They wouldn't die. I promise you, I guarantee to you, if you leave them for just one week. So if you find that a lot of your plants are dying recently, hold off on watering them for about a week. The second hack that I will be sharing with you is to throw away dying plants. Now we all know succulents are resilient, you can keep them alive for a very long time if you manage to keep them healthy and sometimes even if they are not healthy, even if they are struggling, there is still a way you can save them. But if you want to keep your garden, your greenhouse stress-free, if you don't want to stress about succulents, if you don't want to bother with a lot of their problems, just throw with them away. Because this is true when sometimes we make a lot of adjustments, we are still learning about how to care for our plants. We will sometimes treat our older plants not in the very best way because we are still learning. So sometimes those older plants will become wilted, will, will have some insect infestation, will have some fungus. So uh, what I would recommend about that is to just throw them away, especially if your newer succulents are doing much better. Throwing away plants is actually very efficient so that you have a very clean, very nice looking greenhouse. And actually what we're trying to accomplish here with our garden spaces, with our greenhouse, is to grow plants and keep them alive. If they're no longer looking that alive and they're no longer giving us joy, they're no longer making us happy, I'd re I would recommend just throw them away. Especially if you don't have all the resources that you need to care for those dying succulents. So what I would do, adjust your uh, care on your newer succulents. If your older succulent is already way beyond repair, way beyond saving, just throw it away. And I can never really tell you how many plants that I have thrown away here in the greenhouse. There's actually so many. If they were still all alive, I will have another greenhouse full of succulents because of the amount of plants that I have thrown before. On to our third tip and this is about propagation. I would recommend you let your propagations dry out before planting them. Now we all know leaf cuttings, stem cuttings, uh, succulents, sometimes they have a lot of success and especially with succulents compared with any other plant you will have a lot of success by a leaf and stem propagation but sometimes some people will rush it and will just take a leaf cutting and then plant it directly onto the soil and what I would find because I have been doing this mistake before is that most of these leaf propagations if you plant them right away onto the soil they will rot and they will not produce pups and they will not grow successfully so what I'm doing right now is I have a tray 
which I will be putting all of my propagations in so that they will have a chance to dry out first and sometimes I will wait for them to produce a little bit of pop before I plant them onto our potty mixes onto our propagation trays or on the soil. So I would wait for some pops or some roots to appear before I will plant them. By waiting for the pops to appear, you will actually be giving a chance for your wounds to dry out, to heal before planting them so that those wounds will not be infected. So I would recommend that you just wait for your propagation to dry out. You can probably use an egg tray or a tray like the one that I'm using here and just put it in a bright but dry location somewhere that it will still get some diffused light, not direct sunlight so that your, your propagations won't dry out and also avoid getting rain on these propagations because that's what you're trying to avoid too much moisture on these uh, leaf cuttings, stem cuttings so that you can avoid them getting rot. Now, the fourth tip that I will be sharing with you is to organize your succulents according to your microclimates. Now, not all garden spaces will have the same amount of sunlight. And even in one location, the amount of sunlight all over the day throughout the course of the day will not be the same. So here in my greenhouse, I have a space which gets a lot of diffused light, filter light because of the amount of trees that are on the outside. So on those spots, I would put my crassulas and my haworthias since they're ones that doesn't need a ton of light they don't have a lot of cor colors and they actually dry out very quickly if i give them too much sun so they will be spending time there on my filtered light area now onto the other side of the greenhouse i have a spot which gets direct sun throughout the day from morning till afternoon and this is the place that i will be putting my echeverias since these ones are the ones that are most thirsty when it comes to their light they etylate very quickly if i don't give them enough sunlight so i put them in this location so that's what you can do you can arrange your plants depending on your microclimates really and also you can use your plants to make your own microclimates so what i would do is i would sometimes alternate tall plants with shorter ones or i would put the short ones that are sensitive to a lot of sunlight i would put them beside these taller succulent varieties so that the taller plants will shade them a little bit that will give them protection it will avoid them getting sunburned it will avoid them getting too much scorching hot sun because of the uh, microclimate that i made with the plant i covered it with some taller varieties so you can do that as well on your succulents the fifth and final hack for a more prettier healthier succulent garden is to cut off your flower stalks now we all know flower stalks or if you haven't already known this flower stalks actually attract insects mealybugs aphids you name it all sorts of pests when it comes to our plants because flower stalks are very bright and also they're very fragrant when it comes to insects so usually you would find some infestations or some mealybugs on your flower stalks on your succulents especially if you don't have a very sterile environment so to avoid that i would recommend you just cut off the flower stalks on your plants before they even uh, bloom especially if you're not the type who will be uh, hybriding the succulents who will be producing crosses who will be pollinating these flowers if you don't do that just cut off the flower stalks since it doesn't really help with your plant it actually takes away energy from the plant so it's, if your plant is still new is still rooting it will actually take energy away from the roots and onto the flower stalk so i would just recommend that you cut off your flower stalk especially if your plant is not yet established so cutting off flower stalks that is actually called dead heading and generally we're growing these succulents not for their flowers but for their leaves for the appearance of their for rosette formation of their leaves so that's actually the reason why we're growing them so we don't actually need them to produce these flowers so i think that's about it for our five succulent hacks for a prettier healthier garden if you really like those tips you can try those on your plants and please comment below if you have any success trying out those tips or if you're already doing these hacks on your succulents as well comment down below and also if you have any other tips to share when it comes to growing succulents for beginners comment down below so we can help others and also please make sure to hit the like so that you can really help the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. And I think that's about it for this video guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.